everyone, I'm Charlene from So So Dressmaking and welcome to my Get To Know Me video. So today I'm going to be answering all the questions that you have been asking me um, on YouTube and over on Instagram too. So we will start with the most common question that I got, which was when did I start sewing, how did I learn to sew and do any of your family sew. So these are all sort of tied in together. Um, my mum was a dressmaker whenever I was younger. She did it like part time, just sort of a wee side hustle, uh, just doing alterations and dressmaking and um, making clothes, like formal dresses and bridesmaids dresses and that sort of thing. So we were, and she made clothes for me and my sister when we were younger too. So I've always been surrounded by it. Whenever I was really young, we would have helped her like, I would have sat and handed her pins or sorted out wee different bits and pieces of her, her dressmaking stuff and yeah, my interest in it developed really, really early on. Whenever I was five, she got me my first sewing machine, which is a little Singer one, which I still have and still works, so can't wait to get that out for my kids to have a wee go with it. And yeah, that is really where it all started. I, any time we had like family weddings to go to, I would have made my own dress growing up and whenever at school, doing my GCSEs and art and A-level, <clears throat> GCSE and A-level art, I, if, if I could, I was incorporating some sort of sewing or textile work into it there as well. I just really, really enjoyed working with fabrics and sewing and I have always had that more creative flair like I've always loved art and different things so yeah it kind of started from there and then I had a plan to do architecture um, at university and then pretty later on I decided just to change my mind and did fashion management instead so I just yeah I just thought do you know what I can't imagine myself being stuck behind a desk drawing lines every day and I just wanted something that I knew I was going to be more passionate about so I obviously then had some more formal training through my degree so in my degree it was 60% um, business and 40% fashion so there was a lot of the business side so it covered like marketing and supply chains and business and accounting and all that sort of stuff so for me now it's been fantastic because I know you know how to write a business plan, how to do my own accounts, how to do all that sort of thing. So it is actually coming in really handy for me now, um, that I did have that business side to my degree, and then the fashion side. So we covered pattern cutting and pattern drafting. Um, our sewing teacher was she actually trained in a couture bridal house over in London. So like, she was fantastic. She was so good and we did like all the design and like sort of traditional designing with like pen pencil and paper but we also covered all the technical sides so all different CAD and um, programs that we used and doing like technical drawings that you would send off to a garment manufacturer and all that sort of thing so I have covered what during our degree we did cover basically every part of the fashion industry right from like making the textiles like growing them or making them the man-made ones whatever right through to how you actually sell something in the shop so I, I love that I have that really well-rounded view of the whole thing um, and then I ended up working in retail for a long time didn't really do a whole lot of sewing like friends and stuff would have asked me to do their wedding alterations and things like that and I would have done them but I didn't really sew much for myself um, for a long time and then uh, three years ago well just over three years ago whenever I had Charlie I started doing making me baby bibs and leggings for him and then started selling them just to like all the local mums and stuff that I knew and then three years ago started my Instagram and eventually I had really thought about going like full time with the baby stuff but there was a lot at the time it was really hard to find nice jersey fabrics and then it was um there was a lot of different like 
the fabric had to have like all the different certifications to be able to get insurance to sell craft furs and all that sort of stuff so it was all just become pretty complicated and I kind of just switched to dressmaking then so then two years ago I started sewing clothes for myself um, just probably through finding discovering like sewing podcasts and then finding all the different like fabric stores and indie pattern companies and all that sort of thing it kind of just sparked re-sparked my interest um, in sewing clothes for myself whenever I was studying and making things for like weddings and all it was all you could really get here was like formal fabrics so like satins and chiffons and all that sort of thing so there was never really um, much of an appeal for sewing my own stuff but then now obviously there's so much so many options and um, compared to what there used to be so yeah and um, that's kind of what started my me dressmaking and sewing for myself and then I started teaching just um probably just over two years ago now so obviously I would say in the last two years I have probably learned more about sewing just through reading different books and different resources online and just making probably from sewing so many patterns from different companies and like different indie companies and all now too I've probably learned more in the last two years than I learned at all before that I think a lot of it was probably just refresh from the university days but I have probably learned so much now through just just teaching myself really just constantly trying to be better at what I do so that's kind of answered um all those first th few questions let's see so obviously does someone asked um does it do any of my family so my mum does so um yeah I think that covers all of that I'm just making sure I haven't missed anything out and um, someone else has asked me where I'm from I am from Northern Ireland I live in a wee village in County Down so it's it's about 25 minutes from Belfast which is like the main city so it is quite a good lo location and um, close to my family and it's handy to get to different places as well and it's it is a nice wee community for the kids to grow up in and stuff we have a lot of friends around here who have kids the same age as mine so it is nice growing up or for them to grow up here um then so a few people have asked um, what do do I normally have a job outside of lockdown so obviously I've only really been doing the Instagram video or the YouTube videos since basically at the start of lockdown that I started this which has been great because it has kept me um, busy so yeah do I work outside of lockdown have I always been a seamstress and then do you have another job or do I blog and so full-time so um, I when I left university, I worked in retail for um, 10 years, probably, just over, well, probably in total, I've probably worked in retail for about 13 years. So I worked in loads of different retailers for, um, and in different management positions, and then eventually I got a job in H&M as a visual, mer visual merchandiser, which was what I had always wanted to do, like that was always my aim. Um, it was always the part that I enjoyed the most um, when I was working in retail and so visual merchandiser I so if you ever go into a shop one day and everything's in one place and then you come in the next day and it's all been moved that's what I did I moved everything and um, so dressed all the windows and all the mannequins um, <clears throat> did all the floor moves and things like that so that was my job basically I, I did a lot of other things that it was just there was everything there was building there was painting there was just there's so much that that job entailed but I absolutely loved it it was I really really it was definitely the best time working in retail that I've ever had I worked in a couple of different stores so I got to know loads of different people and met some really amazing friends through it and yeah so that was what I did up until November and then with having the two kids I had went down to two days a week and my mum and dad were looking after the kids the days that I was in work and I was getting too much for them because my mum was still working full time 
and yeah we'd been through a lot last year with our family so it was just the right time for me obviously I was doing loads of dressmaking and my sewing lessons were really taking off so it did feel like the right time to step away from working in retail and focus on my sewing instead. So I left at the end of November and since then I have just been teaching sewing lessons um, and doing dressmaking and alterations so a lot of bridal work and yeah so up until the start of lockdown that's what I was doing. Now I um, yeah, I'm just waiting for, there's a wee hall in our village where I teach all my sewing lessons so I'm just waiting for it really to reopen now and for weddings to get started again so that I can start working again. Um, but yeah, one thing I've realised during lockdown and from doing all these videos, I really, I, I really am enjoying this and I would like to make this, I think once I go back to teaching and doing alterations I probably won't have just as much time to dedicate to this so yeah I would like to try and make this part of what I um what I would classify as my job so um yeah that's something that I'm working on at the minute um yeah so then another question I got asked and I do get asked this a lot is how I managed to sew so much with two little ones um so honestly I am really lucky I think in a way too that I've, there's only two years between Charlie and Emily so they are very close and um, Charlie has always been very independent and he's happy to play on his own for hours and um, is really great with imagination and Emily is very social so as long as she has Charlie there she's happy enough that there's something playing there with her so they are great company for each other and um, I do have a blog post and I will link that below about how a few different tips and stuff that I have for um, finding time to sew but usually I mean outside of lockdown if I knew I had a lot of work to do I would have you know we would have went somewhere in the morning like I would have taken them out for a big walk to the park or to like an indoor play or something like that and then home lunch and then they were usually pretty tired and were happy enough to just chill out for a while that I then could get some work done. So there's wee things like that that I would do or um, yeah and I mean I do keep them very involved in all of this like they'll come in and they'll sit on my knee while I'm sewing and like Emily I, this just makes me so happy but she will sit and hand me pins like the way I used to do with my mummy so um, and I have like all their arts and crafts and stuff is right beside my sewing so they come in and they either sit at the kitchen table or bring in their own wee table and they'll colour in or they'll play with play-doh and we're all together and we can chat away and I can get them different things that they want so I try to keep them involved as much as I can with what I'm doing and I think because this is something I've done since they were babies it's kind of it's not you know whenever you take out a sewing machine it's not this new thing that they have to investigate or whatever it's just something that they are used to so I think getting them used to these things early on definitely does help as well because I mean when you ask them what mommy does for work now they say I use my sewing machine so like they do they know that this is what I do and yeah they just they're just used to it and they they don't mind sitting like we'll all sort of sit together and do different things like you know I don't try to keep them away from it or anything and yeah I think they've just got used to it over time and the other thing is like I have been sewing since I was five so I have over the years obviously I've got pretty quick at doing things and a lot of the time now I don't really need to like read the pattern instructions for different things I would make a lot of patterns like multiple times so so I do get thing through things quite quickly and I'm quite a quick sewer so that probably is plays a part in it as well um yeah so then someone Lauren Whitehead asked me on YouTube um have your little ones expressed an interest in sewing and they have I mean they do they want to sit in my knee and watch what I'm doing I'd say Charlie's probably at the age now where I could let him try my wee sewing machine but I know Emily will want to have a go then too, she won't want to be left out. But I'm thinking of getting them some like um, quilting cotton with their favourite cartoon characters or whatever on it and maybe letting them have a go at making like a wee pair of pyjama shorts or something um, on my sewing machine. So 
Emily, I would say definitely has shown a wee bit of an interest. She is very crafty. She'll sit and she'll draw and she'll paint for ages and loves playing with the Play-Doh and all that sort of stuff. So I do think she will probably, Charlie loves building things. So I think once it gets to that stage where he can take pieces and sew them together to make something, that will probably spark his interest. Um, but yeah, I think two, the two of them will show some sort of an interest in it, um, which just makes me so happy. But again, I think it's a similar, like I grew up watching my mummy sew, so that probably sparked my interest. So I think them growing up watching me, so obviously they wanna know what I'm doing. So yeah. Um, hopefully it's not short-lived and they do continue with it. Um, so then, okay, favourite pattern I've ever made. I don't know if I can pick one. <laughs> There's too many and I am planning on doing like a tried and true, my top tried and true patterns. Um, like a blog and a vlog on that. So I don't even know if I could pick a top like three. Um, I have like the patterns that I've made the most. I would say trend patterns usually like they would always either trend patterns, the bias t-shirt dress, I loved it. Really, really loved making it. There was just loads of different details in it that were new to me and it was just yeah, it was really nice to make. And I am on the hunt for another fabric to make another one of them because I really want more of them. I just love the style and everything of it. It's definitely up there. And um, maybe the Homer and Hiles Blair blazer. I know I've been talking a lot about it recently, but I just, I did really enjoy making it too. Um, yeah, I think they're probably up there with my top two favourites. I, I, I don't know, there's so many good patterns out there and I'm definitely going to do a video on my favourite tried and true patterns and I'll include like obviously my favourites and stuff in that too. So yeah, I, that wasn't really a clear answer so I wrote that, that was from patterns and pages on Instagram. So then, so number 65, what inspired me down the sewing and fashion route? Well that, I kind of have answered that now. Um, I think I have always been inspired, obviously the sewing it comes from my mum and just growing up with it but the fashion side of things I have always had a really keen interest in it and I loved like designing um, outfits for the Spice Girls going on tour and stuff like that's what I did when I was younger I just I've always had a really keen interest in it I have about oh I think it's probably about 15 years worth of Vogue magazines in a bookcase and um, it's just I've just always been so fascinated by it and I just love following the trends and all sort of things. So I think it's just, I mean, my mum obviously had, was interested in dressmaking. My nanny owned a clothes shop in Downpatrick. Um, so I think that interest in fashion has probably kind of come down through the generations as well. Um, and Emily loves dressing up now, so hopefully it's been passed on to her too. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's just one of those things that's kind of like, in my jeans nearly like it's always just something that I was probably going to be interested in. Um, <clears throat> Claire Gilmore on Instagram asked what is your sewing outfit you seem to be amazingly prolific. Um, I think I depends what I'm making. I probably do make something new every week but some of, some of the times that could be something that I've been making over two weeks but just finished and yeah it's hard to tell, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I'd say definitely this year I'm averaging at 1.5 makes a week um, so far. I've made over 100, well over 100 now, garments and that is in the last two years. It's been two years since I started sewing for myself. So yeah, it's, um, it is quite high, but a lot of the things I make, it's like, you know, like the Friday Pattern Company square neck top, I can probably cut and sew that within two hours now. You know, so there is a lot of things that are quite quick and easy. Um, and then there is other things like blazers and coats and stuff that take me forever to make, like the more in-depth makes, but it probably looks, yeah, I would say there's probably one new garment every week, but then this is kind of my job. So I, had, I do have probably more time to devote to it. Um, yeah. So thank you for that. 
So then Miriam Sows asked me what's the most outrageous or what's the most extra or outrageously fun thing you have made. So I would say at the moment it is my last indigo dress that I made, the black one with the like humongous sleeves and the different tiers. Um, it's quite short. That is probably the most extra outrageous thing that I have made. I know it's black but it's quite big and puffy and a wee bit ridiculous I think. Um, I don't know when I'm ever going to wear it. But yeah, I'd say that probably is it. I'm making another dress at the minute. It is, I just cut it out last night, actually inspired by Miriam. It's the Lisa Mac um, Baccarat blouse but lengthened into a dress and it has like square neck and the ruffles and the shoulders. I'm making it in green gingham and I have like a like a fringing sort of thing that I might add to the ruffles too so it's probably going to be a wee bit out there as well. Um, but yeah I'd say that indigo dress that I made is probably at the minute the most out there. And then Hide and Silk on YouTube asked who or what has been my biggest influence. So I've probably covered this a wee bit already um, but my biggest influence, well my biggest influence in sewing was definitely my mum. Like she is the one that started me on this and has always been so supportive of it and always encouraged me to, I think her, she was the only girl and had eight brothers and her brothers were always like, you know, focus on the sciences and all that sort of thing. And it wasn't really what she wanted to do. She wanted to do more, something more creative. And I think because of that, she probably always encouraged me more to to do my dressmaking and to follow with, um, follow with what I wanted to, to do as opposed to just doing what was like the more sensible option. Um, it'd be nice if this was making me more money, but <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, I think she's definitely been my biggest influence with doing this and encouraging me to like follow my dreams and focus on building a career out of my sewing. And then my biggest influence in terms of what I make definitely comes from like designers and fashion and bloggers and all that sort of thing. I um, love following along with like when fashion week's happening, I love seeing what all the designers have come up with. I have like millions of Pinterest boards with different bits of inspiration and stuff on them. So I think in terms of what I actually make, that's probably where most of my inspiration comes from. And I think that is it. So those are, that's all the questions that everyone has asked me. Um, if you have anything else you just want to ask, put them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. I hope you have enjoyed getting to know me a wee bit more. Thank you all so much for asking me questions. Um, I've really enjoyed this, putting this together and just letting you get to know me a wee bit more. So I have um, set up a Kofi PH now. Obviously I was saying that I have really enjoyed, like Max is down here, that's why I'm petting him. Um, I have said that I want to try and incorporate my um, blogs and YouTube and stuff more into what I am doing sort of as my career um, as part of my job and I've set up a Kofi page so um, at the minute I just would like to be able to upgrade my equipment so I am using my phone to record all this at the minute and it's I would love to have a proper camera and microphone and all that sort of thing just to make um, obviously the content that I'm creating just that wee bit more professional and I definitely want to like a you know I'm going to start focusing on doing more like different content for this like tutorials and different bits of pattern drafting and things and um, so yeah if there's anything like that that you just want to see as well just pop them in the comments down below too but yeah so I will put the link to my coffee page down below and if you want to buy me a coffee and support me and um, I would be forever grateful to you and yeah thank you so much for watching this and i hope you all have a lovely day and i will catch up with you all soon bye <laughs>